his fumble mm -hmm. that he forced, and he mentioned the phrase "can't be 316." God loves who, God loves those who run to the football. Um, is that original to this place, or is that like a something that's followed him? Where that come from? Uh, well, you know, we have that meeting about the ball every week, and each coach has, you know, we've kind of picked the coach each week to kind of present to the whole team, so it stays fresh and guys come up with some creative ways to have their meetings. Um, and one of the things uh, Camp came up with when he did one of the first ones is he said, God loves those who run to the football. So we said it's Campy 316. Um, so he's probably just referring to that. That was one of the first meetings that we had. But it just goes back to talking about running to the ball constantly. And um, you're usually rewarded if you do. So um, I guess you can give uh, Camp credit for his phrase that God loves those who run to the football. Um, so I'm glad Evan remembered that. I'm glad Evan was there. It was a great punch. I mean, all joking aside, that was, that was textbook. And you see that show up in practice time after time with him, and there's some guys that have a knack for it. We start every practice, the first two minutes of individual. It's all, ball, it's all takeaways for us on defense, and a lot of that is teaching guys how to punch. I mean, it's no accident that it looked the way it did. It's how he's taught. He's embraced it. He practices it, and then it shows up in the game. And I'm confident with him it will show up over and over again because he's, he's getting really good at it. Hey Jeff, so why was it important? Matt told us that it was your idea. To, are, are they just called ball meetings? Is that what they're called? Uh, yeah. It's, we, we, so we have team meetings, right? So Matt has a team meeting where he emphasizes the plan. Like early in the week, every coach is going to come out and it's going to be, here's the plan. This is what we need to do to win the game. And Matt does a great job every week. He lays it out, offense, defense, special teams. These are the things we must do if we're going to win the game, right? It's like the blueprint to how we're going to win it. And then we review it after the game. And usually if we follow it, we win the game. Um, so I guess the meeting we have on Thursday, yeah, we call it the ball meeting. I mean, I didn't even think about it, but that's what we call it. Um, there's not another name for it. If you want to come up with one, maybe you can let me know. Um, but it is. It's the ball meeting. Why was it important when I brought it up to him? Um, you get what you emphasize, right? And I, I think what's always been really important to me philosophically is taking the ball away. And I don't think it happens by accident or uh, by any luck. Um, I think you gotta, you gotta talk about it, you gotta be about it, and you have to go out and practice it. And then it's gonna show up in games, and then once they believe in it, it's gonna show up more and more. Um, so when you get the whole, when you get in front of the whole team, and you constantly are talking about it each week, and you're showing the team that it's, it's not just talk. It's not like hearsay. Like, hey, we're gonna attack the ball and be good at taking away the ball. It's we've dedicated a whole meeting to it. Uh, when I was in San Francisco with the Niners, Kyle had me do that meeting every Thursday for two years. Um, so it's something that I took a lot of pride in. It's something that I put a lot of time into, and I wanted to give a powerful message each week. Sometimes it got hard after a long season when you're just talking about the ball. But I think in those two years, I've learned the importance of the ball. Um, but I do think it is really important. I think our staff is taking great ownership in those meetings. And you also talk to the offensive players. It's not just talking about taking the ball away. It's showing the offensive players, you know, this is these guys aren't holding it well. We can't look like that. Or there's times when we'll put up in front of the group you know, if, if I'm the Texans, I'm coming after you, here's why, and we'll show three clips of our guys not holding the ball well. Like, you're our targeted guys, we're going to get you, right? Um, so that's pretty much it. I, the, the reason I ask is, A, I think we found out from Malik, because he mentioned the ball meeting after the Tennessee game, because we were at, you know, he was being asked about how good he'd been with protecting the ball. But everybody says they want to get takeaways. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is a definite cause and effect of the get what you emphasize? Because every defensive coordinator always talks about them, but they don't necessarily get the results that you guys have got. Yeah, but it's, it, it's I see better than I hear, right? It's not, you can't just talk about it. And we're not just talking about it. We've dedicated a meeting to the football, right? And then we go out and on the days where we can't thud up because we don't have pads on, everybody better finish with a punch on the ball and if the ball's in the air, we better go attack it and go get it. And we find ways to disrupt the quarterback. And I think you get what you emphasize. You can't emphasize everything, right? It's impossible. So I guess a better way is, like, what are the most important things to you philosophically 
as a head coach, which Matt does an awesome job because he talks about the ball, and then we take it on defense. And, and I've said since day one, it, it is the football. I mean, that is everything. I mean, it's the number one determining factor on whether or not you're going to win or lose the game is taking care of the football. So how can we not emphasize that? And that's what we've done. We found ways to emphasize it as much as we can. But forget us coaches. The players are the ones who took the belief in it. They've practiced it. And they've gone out and executed it on the field. And again, it's not by luck. I mean, these are, these are real punches, whether you know, it was the defensive tackle punching the ball out or our safety coming and punching the ball out. or It's all that stuff. So the ball meeting. You overlap with Bobby Sloan. I did. Here in San Francisco? Uh, no, it was for it was for two years. Okay. What, what did you think of him then? And is he up running some of the same stuff that maybe they did? Bob was on defense. Oh, he was. Yeah, so it was Robert. Yeah, and his, his dad, who I've gotten to know too, a phenomenal human, great coach. I've talked to him quite a bit. Um, so on defense, it was uh, Robert was the defense coordinator. D'Amico was the linebacker coach, and then Bobby was our quality control coach. And it was, you know, Bobby and myself spent a lot of time together. Um, I think the world of him as a person. A great friend, great family, hung out a ton, uh, highly intelligent. I mean, probably could just as easily be a defensive coordinator. Um, so it's no surprise to me that Kyle said, you know what, this guy's really smart. Because I left and went to Ohio State. And then he gives me a call and says, Kyle's stealing me on offense. So Kyle stole him on offense. and. Taught him for a few years, so Bobby's got a great background on defense, and now he's an offensive coordinator, and he's he's done a great job, which doesn't surprise me. He's got a background on defense, he's got a background on offense. He was trained very well on defense, he was trained very well on offense. Um, I can see him having a great relationship with the players. Um, just a genuine guy, and um, yeah, it's it's he does a really nice job in the run game, um, in the pass game, uh, and he's got really good players. So. In a year and a half, in a short time, implementing his scheme, he's done a nice job, and I, and I am really happy for him because he is one of the better guys. Did he ever talk about growing up? He went to high school here. Did he ever talk about growing up? Yeah, he talked about. I can't remember any specifics, but I knew he grew up here, and and he's probably really excited to get back. Um, you know, so I'll be excited to see him before the game. Jeff uh, Bullard obviously has made the highlight real plays that other guys have, but what does he do well besides you know making those plays close to the ball like you've talked about to earn all the time he's gotten? Uh, Bullard, he's versatile. Um, he's really good around the football. He can play the run well. He has good coverage skills. He can play in deep zones. He can play man. Um, I just think it's his versatility that allows us to do so much. And I still think, in all fairness to him, you know, we kind of shifted him around a little bit, which is hard for a rookie, like really hard, harder than anybody has any idea. He's playing two entirely different positions, um, and he hasn't practiced that one as much as he's practiced, you know, being further back as a true safety. So you got to give him a lot of credit for being able to transition. I don't know how many rookies could do that. I mean, first of all, it's hard to play as a rookie in this league, right? The guy's played two different positions already as a rookie, and he's done pretty well. Um, I think the more that he can learn and the more experience he gets, I think you're going to see him move around even more. I mean, that's the whole thing about our defense right now. I mean, we got some of these young guys that give us the versatility to move people around and get creative. And as you start to see each week, if you turn us on, if you turn us on and really watch us, there's a little bit, there's something a little bit new every single week, right? And it's kind of talked about, we got to build and build and build and find out what we're good at, who's good at what, and then really start to roll. And, and I don't, I don't think we're there yet. I think we're still at the infancy stages of where we're going to be as a defense and what ultimately it's going to look like. Um, but he is a key piece in all of that, like a key piece. And we see a lot of personnel rotation in a secondary. Usually that position, DBs, you just kind of stay on the field with your best five and your nickel. How, how much of a challenge is it to work everyone in the way you did? We got multiple guys in the slot, perimeter, all over the place. I think it takes time. And then it takes getting to know your players, and it takes the players getting to understand the scheme. Uh, and I think that goes back to what I just said. Um, you know, you start having these different packages of people so you can get guys in different roles, so you can create some mismatches, so you take advantage of situations, so you put yourself in better position to have success. I just think the more we go, the easier it's going to be. Um, it takes detailing out by the coaches and the players, and we kind of just roll with it in the game. Uh, but the more competition there is, the more versatility is, I think we'll be better and better as we go. Is 
something that's newer for you? Have you done that in the past much, having different you know, nickel packages and whatnot? Yeah, for sure. I, again, I think this, this league's about matchups, right? And I think if you have guys that can play certain positions that gives you an advantage, then I think it's our job to coach it and get it done. And I think our staff's done a good job with that. I also think that as we go um, and we evolve within our scheme, I think we're starting to get a really good feel for that. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's about adapting, right? I'm not, I've kind of said this since I got here. It's not like, hey, here's, here's the playbook. This, this is in, go run the defense. It's each week, you know, what did we look like? What do we look like when they watch us on tape? What can we do a little bit different to counter that? What, what do we do really well? Like, let's do more of it, make it look different. Um, and then as we start to see certain players do certain things, how can we best use them to improve? We have to keep getting better. Like, that's the whole key to this whole entire thing as we go. Um, so any way that we can adapt and get better, uh, both coaching, playing, scheme, personnel, it ain't, it's not just like plug and play. Let's, let's evolve. And that's, I think that's very important. Jeff, was there um, a moment in a preseason game or in camp where you thought you might want to play Bullard more at nickel? Or when you drafted him, because of his experience in college, you thought that maybe he could help you there? When we drafted him, we knew we could do it. It was just a matter of not forcing two positions to a young player too soon. I think that'd be unfair, and I don't think it would have given him a chance to get on the field. I think if we had done that, we would have kind of slowed the progress of him. So that's why we kind of waited and got him really comfortable at one position where we felt like we could play him rather than get half the reps here, half the reps here, and then it's like, eh, is he ready to play? Um, so that's why. But we felt very confident when we drafted him that he'd be able to do both. I think he, I can think he can even do more than what we're doing with him. I just don't think that's fair to him yet. And I've told him that. Like, he's that type of guy where you got to be able to move him around. And I think you're going to see him play faster and faster every week. Uh, Edrin Cooper, he played his most snaps last week after playing the most snaps the week before that. Is that a trend you can think going to continue him playing more and more? And kind yeah. of what's allowed him to play in such a larger role so far? He's starting to understand what he's doing. He's practicing more, he stayed healthy, he's practicing better. And he's proving to us and his teammates that he knows what he's doing and he can execute at a high level. Uh, and the more he does that and the better he plays, the more he'll play. And then he's another guy. Um, when you watch his skill set, I think, I think there's places that we can kind of put him in that are a little bit different too because I think he has a unique skill set and there's some things he can do on different downs and distances that I think he gives us a, you know, a pretty good chance to have success. So, I, again, you don't. You don't want to rush some of these rookies into having to learn too much because then they're not going to be good, right? So you, you got to be careful there too. So Jeff, did you, you were just saying about Bullard about playing safety as a rookie. So did something happen that the light went on for you that Evan Williams could be much more than maybe what you first thought when you drafted him or what has allowed him to be able to do what he's done too? With Evan? Evan is the... Evan is exactly who we thought we drafted. Um, smart player, good tackler, tough, great communicator, plays well in deep zones. He has man coverage ability because he's so patient. He plays with such a good base. Um, he's got great feet, eyes. He can finish with poise. Um, no, it's just a matter of not rushing it, right? Letting him develop. Like, let's coach him and make sure he's really ready to have success. You don't want to take a rookie and just throw him in if he's not ready. And we felt he was ready to go and play more. And now we have a certain package where they're both in the game at the same time. And there are some games where maybe they'll all be at different positions. But our job is to make sure that we get guys better throughout the season. Like, I think it's really important to understand that you know, football's still about fundamentals and technique, and our job as coaches is to get these players better. Like, they need to play their best game the last game we play of the season. So the more they're ready to play, the better they are, the more we'll play them. Jeff, what are your thoughts on Stroud and just some of the challenges that come there? I think Stroud's a really good pro player. I mean, I was at Ohio State as a coordinator when we recruited him. So, I, you know, I remember, remember him on his visits, and I missed him because I left after a year, and he came in. and. I followed them, obviously, being a big fan of Ryan and that staff, and um, saw the success that he had. And then for him to come in last year and have the early success that he did, 
Um, he sees the game really well. He's really accurate. He has a big arm. He's more athletic than people think, and I keep telling everybody that. He's bigger than you think, too. He's got a big lower body. He has a strong base. He's hard to tackle. Um, he's poised. I think, I, I think he's a really good player right now, and I, I think eventually he's going to be you know, one of the premier guys, if not sooner than later. So I have a ton of respect for him and what Bobby's done on offense. Um, I think Mixon's a really good player, a violent runner, strong, sees it well, um, big play, explosive guy. I mean, that's the one thing when you turn on their tape, I think they're number one in explosive passes. Um, you know, I'm pretty confident in that. I think obviously we're probably pretty close behind. If we're not one, they're one. Um, and then when he's in the game, there's the explosive run element because he can go. I think both backs are really good players. The line's good, and obviously they have really good receivers. Um, I know Nico's out, but Diggs is a great player, and so are those other guys. So it's one of the most explosive offenses in the NFL with a good running game, a good quarterback, and a good coach. So this is going to be a great challenge for us, and you know we're excited for that.